JerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things baseball across North Jersey. This is an impromptu edition as we are throwing it together here late on a, what is it? Is it even t- it's Tuesday night, the day before the start of the Bergen County Tournament. We wanted to get some stuff out on the air so people couldn't accuse us of being second guessers. I am Corey Doviak. We got no guests. We got no second co-host. The deck is cleared for just no me. Nicknames. You have no you have no nicknames either this week. <laughs> we have Joey Sutera. Hello, Mr. Sutera. <laughs> How are we? <laughs> no nonsense. How are we doing? No nonsense. It's That's all about it. the Burger You know what I am this week? Program. You know what I am this week? What? Joey no nonsense. That's what I am. Joey Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Joey Neutral. That's, that's the Joey Neutral. <laughs> there you go. Joe Gabriel is going to be changing his phone around, uh, the nicknames uh, and the phone yeah, again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He sends me a picture every every week with, with the new nickname, and every time my phone rings, it's a picture of me with my new nickname underneath it. So yeah. today it's Joey, it's Joey Neutral for the next week. Yeah, before you interjected, though, and said no new nicknames, I was going to go with Joey Suit and Tie, because last time I saw you at Woodridge High School there, you were in your a- advisory role, your administrative role, and you were looking kind of dapper in your suit and tie. I mean, you know. I appreciate that. You know, I, I was taught a long time ago that it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you look doing it, and, you know, <laughs> if you can dress sharp and look look the part, you can fool a lot of people. So, you know, that's that's, that's what I do. That's my game. All right, before, all right, we're going to get right into this here. No uh, messing around uh, in the no. prologue uh, this week. I do just want to pass along one quick funny story from our other co-host, uh, normally Richie Ballgame Barton, but we had to cut him off this week because he doesn't cover baseball. Did he get hurt? So. Did, he, did he get hurt playing Pepper? <laughs> no, but he. Uh, I, I, your name came up in conversation, and he goes, oh, let me ask you a question. I said, he goes, Joseph Terry, I haven't seen you in a while. Fat or skinny? <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, because I've gotten fat, he's gotten fat. Everybody that we know gotten fat, so he hasn't seen you in a while. And he asked, Joe Sotera, fat or skinny? So. I saw him last year. I'm at, tell him, I, Barton, I, last time I saw you was at Midland Park, Woodridge, girls soccer, state game. And I'm right. the same weight, 185 pounds, as I was then. So there's the answer to your question, Barton. You probably got me by 37 pounds. There's no doubt about it. The only guy in the history of cancer to gain weight on chemotherapy, Richie Bullock. <laughs> 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 That's terrible. All right, let's talk you better edit that. You better edit that. That's, you're going to hell for that. <laughs> hey, Joe, if it hasn't happened already. Uh, okay. Anyway, all right, here's where we're yeah. going to start with the Bergen County Baseball Tournament. Let's make some grand pronouncements here because there are some overarching things that I want to talk about. First of all, the new schedule. Uh, it, the yep. playing play games start on Wednesday. We have eight games across eight different sites on Wednesday afternoon, leading into yep. Saturday's round of 16. Uh, a change in the round of 16 this year used to be that they were all games were played at three neutral sites. The traditional right. sites of the last few years were Demarest, Emerson, and Lyndhurst. This year, right. moving to home fields, which, from a journalistic standpoint here as the editorial director of NorthJerseySports.com, I like. Because I used to feel pressure to go from Emerson to Demarest to Richie B. being down in Lyndhurst, trying to get to as much as we can. Now, I can get to one, maybe, or two games. You're playing games all over across the county. What do you expect me to do? I can get to one, maybe two, right? So right. it takes right. a little pressure off of me. So that's good. Then the quarterfinals will be played in two sites on Saturday, May 12th at Northern Valley Demarest, the home office of Bergen County Baseball, and right. at Emerson High School. Semifinals Saturday the 19th at Northern Valley Demarest. And here's the big change. The final, not Sunday the 20th or the day after the semifinals as is customary, but now splitting it up, adding the extra week. Championship game. Bergen County this season, Saturday, May 26th, at Northern Valley Demarest High School. And now, when you slot teams into a bracket and you look at how it's all going to shake out, it's a big change. It is It is a big change. And I think, um, you know, as you progress and as you get into... A, but you know what, though, Corey? In the end, it's, I think it's kind of 
it's kind of going to be the same in, in a lot of respects because you're going to have teams that are still going to be vying for, uh, you know, playing in the county semis and the county finals and having state games that following Monday or Tuesday or whatever it is. So right. I think I think what it obviously does is kind of it, it, it'll um, diminish the amount of teams that are going to, going to be faced with who do we throw Saturday uh, in our county game when we have a county game on Monday because there's only going to be a, a handful of teams left in the county tournament. Um, and those teams that are have been knocked out are, are going to have an easier decision I mean, there's no decision. We have the state game. This is this is what we're doing. Um, yep. But I, I mean, ultimately, to spread it out, um, I think I, I kind of like that concept. Um, not that anyone cares about what I like or not, but I, I, I think it makes it a little bit easier on those teams that that you know are are. Um, you, you're not going to have a choice. It's going to eliminate that choice for you. You're in the states. Go. You're in the counties. You're in the counties for a reason. You got more than you know. You're in that in that semifinal game, and you're you're into that second and third round of the state game for a reason. You have more than one arm, um, so I think you you know you feel comfortable um, uh, making that decision either way. You, you, you really can't make a wrong decision. All right, so we got eight seeds, top eight seeds, buys straight into the round of sixteen on Saturday. Number one, Don Bosco Prep. Number two, Pascal Kills. Number three, Saint Joseph Regional. Number four, defending champion Bergen Catholic. Number five, Ridgewood. And let's take this opportunity to break the good news about Kurt Homan, Ridgewood's head coach, won his 500 career wins today in a victory over North Bergen. Uh, Kurt Homan, a, a get past guest on this show, uh, probably glad we didn't ask him to come on because every time we do, no. he proceeds to lose. So he, he would loses. have, <laughs> yeah, he would have been stuck on four ninety nine. Yes. <laughs> but a good guy, you know, couldn't happen to a better guy, class act. Um, he's the one guy, you know, when you have him on the show, he's so, you know, uh, well-spoken and, yep. and, and, and genuine and, and, and just a good-hearted guy. And then he's got to, you know, he's got to deal with the two of us and, and kind of just, you know, in his mind he might be thinking these guys are idiots. Yeah. But he'll never be the guy to come out and say that uh, no. because he is such a, such a good guy. But it's great. <laughs> I mean, 500 wins is is, you know. It's amazing. I don't know off the top of my head how many guys in Bergen County have won 500 games, but uh, you know uh, he's in a he's in a he's in very rare air, Corey, as they say. No doubt about it. And it's exactly 301 more career victories than you have. Is that what it is? What do I have? Oh, 199. Yeah, yeah, 199. 199. I have exactly zero, unless you count Northvale Recreation Softball, which in that case I have one but or two. You actually are you actually are um, accused of being. The reason why a lot of teams lose. Yeah. Uh, so you have a lot of losses to speak of. Um, Only I know that Demarest. I know that Demarest absolutely <laughs> hates when you go there. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually got a, a text message to tell you to stay away <laughs> from Demarest, especially especially in tournament games. So do not go there and cover them. Yeah. If you listen to my critics, no team has ever won a game that I've been present at. <laughs> we did. In yeah, Milford, we did. That's right. And a couple at Woodridge, too, here, uh, under the great yeah, yeah. Sir Michael Carthage. All right, number six seed, Mawa. Number seven seed, Paramus Baseball. That's a nice little comeback story for Paramus. Uh, They're John, back. Yeah. And uh, good for John, the head coach over there. Went through a couple of rough years. Uh, I actually saw him at a bowling match. I was, believe it or not, over the winter. And I said, how are you going to be? He's like, I have no idea. So, uh, obviously better than he thought, or maybe he was playing coy with a uh, reporter who was moonlighting as a bowling photographer, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he uh, good to see them back in it, and St. Mary Baseball, the only team in Bergen County to beat the Woodridge Fighting Blue Devils, the team with the most wins of any competitor on the Bergen County baseball scene. Is that correct, Joe? Yeah. yeah. It is. But you know what it means? It means you didn't get a top ten seed. No, no. You know, well, we did. We we got the ten seed. Oh yeah, you're right. 15, we have fifteen wins right now. But do you know what that means? That means you're all nothing. taken care of for the states, though. It means nothing. <laughs> yes, we 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 got our seed, and we've been telling our kids, you know, and and if they listen, I'm going to tell them again that what well, now you're in tournament time. It's one loss, and you're out. It's over. You're done. So. What's what's really your, your your yeah you want to win as much as possible, but 
you've been there. Teams have been there. You know, 18, 18 wins, 19 wins, state tournament time, you're out in the second round. So you're not looking back going, whew, what a great season, 19, 20 wins when you get bounced. So it's 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 how you finish, and it's it's the ability to sustain. So we, we better be locked in, and, and, you know, teams are coming after us. So we're ready. As, as my good friend Brian Dunn likes to say, you haven't done anything yet. You have. <laughs> <laughs> so big tuna, don't get a big head. Just keep pitching yeah, there, young big, fella. Big tuna. <laughs> big tuna. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the my point, reading off the top eight seeds, not only is that quality information broken by the Bergen County Coaches Association Twitter account, you can find yeah. them at Bergen Coaches uh, on Twitter. They had the seeds first for the first time this year, which was great. Uh, that able, is nice. Yeah. The way it should be. The way it should be. Absolutely. When the coaches own the information, the coaches should disseminate the information first, and the rest of us schlubs, NorthJerseySports.com, and the uh, publication formerly known as the Bergen Record, they should have to wait. I mean, we'll, we'll what are take they known them. as now? What is uh, that known as now? I believe it is USA Today Network slash North Jersey. If I, uh, if if no I'm comment. not mistaken, I don't, yeah, no I don't comment. Even, I don't even know who works over there anymore. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. Uh, that's for the uh, Who Gives a Crap channel here on NorthJerseySports.com, which we will be launching soon. Uh, great channel. That'll be a great channel because <laughs> nobody will listen. Nobody <laughs> actually gives a crap. <laughs> that's right. <It'll, laughs> right. So look, <laughs> coming, coming soon, the Who Gives a Crap channel on North Jersey Coming Sports. soon, <laughs> the Dead Air channel for anyone <laughs> yeah. that wants to listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you got nothing better to do, uh, of all of your entertainment options, tune in to White Noise. Turn it on. Listen <laughs> yeah. to static. You're right. <laughs> So my point is, those eight teams yeah. put themselves in a great position because they have one less game to play, and this is what I want to ask you about. A guy who is the first base coach of a team this year who has been a head coach of teams in the tournament in years past. What do you do here? you got to play Wednesday. Do right. you – now, and here, here's some – you know, uh, let me just throw these games out there, and there are other ones where this type of uh, decision comes into play. But if you're a Ramapo, right? You're playing. Right. You're the 15th seed. You're home. You're against Bergen Tech, which has not been in the tournament in forever. First of all, congratulations to Bergen Tech for playing their way in. Now they right. got to go up to Ramapo. Ramapo has a decision to make. Uh, Casey Hunt on Wednesday, not available for Saturday, or David Ring, Jack Hagen, one of their other guys. Hope you get past Bergen Tech with your two, three, or whoever you got and then have Casey Hunt ready to go on full rest. Uh, this is just an example because, uh, as I said, it comes into play with other teams as well. Joe, what do you do? Well, I don't know what other co – I, I could tell you what I would do. That's my um, question. I mean, I, I think you have a loaded gun on the bench, for lack of a better phrase, and if you – and it's happened before uh, – you have your number one available, you have to get to tomorrow. And that being said, what message do you send to your team if, I mean, it, it can go both ways. What, what I would do, my number one's ready, my number one goes. Right. Um, you know, if I have a game the day before, a league game, or it, he's got, if it's his turn, he goes. I mean, what are you saying to the kids the, the two and the three that you have, if you skip them or, I mean, get to tomorrow. And you worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, right. But, you know, not my team, not my arms, I don't know. What would I do? County game, you got to get to Saturday. You don't know what's going to happen Saturday. Um, it, you, you can't you can't judge every, anything on what might happen. You have to go with what's in front of you today. Now, other guys might think it might think differently. Uh, other guys might say, you know what, I think we get by with our two, our three, and then what, what great position we're in if we do that and now we have our number one ready for, for the, second, the second game. Uh, me, I'm from the philosophy of go, go now. You got your number one ready, go. Because if, if you lose... With your number one on the bench, it, it looks it's it's one of those things, Corey. If 
you lose with your one on the bench, you look foolish. Um, if you <laughs> get by, you look like a genius because yeah. now you're in round two with your number one, and oh, what you know, you played it great. Uh, to me, it's straightforward. Here you go. Here's the ball counting game. You're ready. You go, and we deal with Saturday. Saturday. Well, let me tell you now. That's from a coach's standpoint, and I get it 100. percent Well, it even goes back further than that. I mean, if you're a, a a thinking man's head coach, like a guy like Mickey Hunt, as we're talking about Rampo, you have this worked out well beforehand. I mean, you're yes. You know, you have your rotation set going in, and whoever's turn it is, because you set the rotation the way you wanted it, that's the way you play it. But now, let me be right. selfish, and let me look at it from a journalist standpoint. Uh, you got Ramapo, Bergen Tech. Now, if Rampo to win were to win without a kid like Casey Hunt on the mound, where I am going to be on Saturday afternoon in what is supposed to be under brilliant sunshine is at the field early at Montvale because I tried to go this past weekend against Bergen Catholic. You know, they build a, right. <laughs> Again, this just shows nothing but Corey Doviak's tangents because I wanted to go to Pascal Kills against Bergen Catholic on Saturday. Had to cover a softball right. game first, drive over there. They built this whole new complex. I read a whole friggin' story on it. $4 million. I think it was $2 million total. New parking lot, whatever. Parking lot's full when I get there, Joe. So, <laughs> come on! They didn't have a spot. They didn't have a spot for you. No, no spot. And then not only that, where you used to be able to park along the out, outfield fence, uh, yes. yeah. Now it says permit parking only. So I am not going to pay fifty dollars to get a ticket to go watch <laughs> basket kills against Bergen Catholic. But getting back to my original point, if. Yeah. Ramapo has Casey Hunt lined up for a Saturday against the... I don't know what Pascal kills. Uh, I know Paul Sullivan pitched today as they they clinched a, a league championship. And Ryan Ramsey pitched uh, a gem, I should add, against Bergen Catholic on Saturday. Ramsey is probably available. Siegenthaler or Jack Brodsky are going to be available. So if I got Hunt against one of those three guys, forget everybody else, Joe. I don't care what the Woodridge Blue Devils are doing on Saturday. I'm going to Pascal kills Ramapo. But that's just selfishly because I want to see that matchup. But... No, and that and, and and rightfully so. And and you know if you're if you're if you're Pascal kills, you're sitting there and you're like, wow, you know we we put together we put together a pretty damn good year. We, yeah. we got a pretty damn we got a pretty damn good staff. Uh, yeah. You know a, 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 a one through nine that that can swing. Um, fundamentally, you know, sound team. You know, top four team in Bergen County. And your your gift is is Casey Hunt possibly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Hills. Here you go. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I, that's, that's tough. I mean, and to be honest with you, it's, you know, having been in the room, having been a guy, a coach who has, you know, sat there sometimes and goes, wow, you know, we really broke our, our tails to get into this, and, and this is the kid that, that we're going to have to face. I mean, uh, you know, we, we, we're getting a little bit of that, too, if uh, we get the kid from the lefty from, from Fairlawn. You know, we... we this is this is your gift. This is your reward. Now it, it's twofold. You, you can say it. You can sit there and complain about it. You can complain about uh, the matchups, and, and or you could just say, "Look, you're going to have to beat somebody really, really good. Yeah, probably more than once to win a county <laughs> title. Right. So I get it." You know, it, I get it. You don't. You, you feel like your team is 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 better um, than than having to to get that matchup that early. But but at the same time, you know, you, you're going to have to beat those guys um, eventually. Yeah, so, you can't duck. There's no ducking. Twenty four. Twenty four teams made it. They're all good. So you're really, you know, you, you want to say there's uh, degrees of good. I will grant you that point, but there's no bad teams right. in here that you're gonna, it's going to say, yeah, you know what? It, all right. So some of these other first. Well, let's let's take care of a couple other uh, orders of business here. Things we got that I do want to mention. Right. Uh, Midland Park is the number twenty two seed. They will play at Pascac Valley on Wednesday afternoon. Midland Park back in the tournament under Frank Clark. Frank Clark, no stranger to the Bergen County Baseball Tournament. Did it many times at Waldwick. But moves over to Midland Park, hometown team. His kid's coming up through the ranks there. Uh, in his first season, he's going uh, at Pascac Valley. Uh, now, Pascac Valley, again, uh, in there. The last public school team to win this thing. A great program with Will Lynch over there for sure. But it is a nice story that Midland Park is included this year with our guy Frank Clark. 
It is, and you know, uh, kudos to Frank because I think we were talking earlier about you know when I, I don't remember um, the last time, and I don't. I'm not saying anything negative, but the last time that Midland Park was was in, um, yeah. I think let's 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 be honest. It's it's the job that he did. Yes, the, the product that he puts on the field, um, and and at the same time, it, a lot of it has to do with Frank Clark and and the fact that. You know his teams, his programs. You know, you, you know you're going to get a quality program, a, a quality game when 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 you're out there, um, when he puts his team out there. Um, it's it's good to see Frank back in um, and and Midland Park back in. Um, you know, there, there are a couple teams, Corey. We, we, we were talking. There are a couple teams that are not in this year that that we were used to to seeing in there. There are a couple new teams that are in. I think yep. we talked about um, uh, Dwight. Was it Dwight? Englewood, Dwight uh, Angle, uh, no, Dwight Morrow from Englewood. Sorry, Dwight Morrow. Yeah, Dwight Morrow. And listen, they just uh, they they just won a league title for the first time in fifty five years and made the Burden County wow. tournament. I, I don't even, to be honest, and it's embarrassing to say, my wife has taught in the school district for twenty three years. I have no idea who the head baseball coach is at uh, Dwight Morrow, and I should do a little research and get him on the show next week, regardless, win or lose, because. What an unbelievable that's, that's, story! That's great. Yeah, that is a great story. That's that's a good. That's a great accomplishment. Um, I, and and they. I, I've they been at this. Been, tw- yeah, I've been at this twenty years, and I, I've never covered a Dwight Morrow baseball game. I've never had any reason to. So. Well, maybe uh, maybe you should now. Yeah, maybe you think so. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think I think they I think they would appreciate it. You know, that, that would be kind of nice. Yeah. And they play at Emerson. They, you know what, though? In, in, in fairness, they, those guys, the guys in that league, the coaches in that league, have said over the last few years that that they have been um, improving. They have been putting, you know, uh, uh, a competitive team on the field. And and they <clears throat> talk about going through your lumps. I mean, fifty five years. You know, that, that's that's. Uh, I don't think. It, I think it goes without saying that. You know, that's arguably one of the one of the best stories of the year uh you know state championships and and everything else included i mean that that's a great story uh, but you know you see that i mean there's some teams that are that are not in this year that we're used to seeing um you know dumont dumont's not in um, does that hurt you to say joe does that hurt you to say you're a dumont now now you're a husky i mean your boys are all in the dumont little league over there running around getting thrown out of games yelling at umpires <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it you does, got uh, it, you got Dumont dirt in your house. It uh, yes, there's Dumont dirt in my house. It, it does it does sting a little bit um, that they're that they're not in. Uh, who else? Who else were we talking about? That See, we're I f- to see in the- I feel like you're setting me up because the other one that we discussed is Old Depend, which hurts me. Oh yes, oh yeah, <laughs> OT, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. OT's not OT's not in. But you know what? I I mean, I guess I know we were going to talk about the the selection process. And, yeah, and I I. You know, I have my opinion on on you know guys not not sitting at that seat, not not having a seat at the table, and then and then you know killing the 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 process. Uh, and and I have an opinion on it, and and I think that you know you could take OPR, you could take <laughs> strength of schedule, you could take six fifty winning percentage. I don't care what your winning percentage is, six thirty, five eighty, whatever. Right. When two teams listen, when two teams go on the field at the same time, and you have two pitchers on the mound, anything can happen on any given day. And I keep pointing back to St. Joe's and Rob Kaminsky, one of the greatest uh, pitchers ever to come through Bergen County. And Corey, they played Ridgefield Park in a county <laughs> tournament. I wish I could remember the kid's name who threw the game. Corey, you know who won the game, right? Yeah, yeah, one nothing. I have a picture of the okay. scoreboard somewhere. Okay, do you think at that moment that anybody was thinking about OPR or <laughs> anybody was thinking about Ridgefield Park and who they played prior to that game and who St. Joe's? And we know, we know the competition that St. Joe's plays. We know the, we knew, we knew how good Rob Kaminsky was. I mean, arguably. Uh, hard to find somebody uh, that was more um, spoken about, uh, more hype, more people went to see. And you tell me in all honesty, if you were a betting man, you ever would have thought that Richfield Park was going to win that game? And that kid was going to, what Kaminsky throw, a two-hitter? I believe it was a two-hitter. 
And did the Ridgefield Park kid no hit them that day? If I'm yeah, correct, yes, he did. And I again, I repeat, I wish I could remember the Ridgefield Park kid's okay. name. Okay, so when you take, a, do you think that a piece of paper with OPR and all that other stuff on it means anything? Zero. It means absolutely okay. nothing. Okay. So, <laughs> well, you, then you here's the thing: you get into a situation like the Bergen County Jamboree in basketball, and that I have some issues with. Uh, the way that tournament's done, and I've spoken about them on our basketball show, but the one thing that the Jambo does great is that they send people out to watch games. Now, I go around and see a lot of games, and I can tell you, you know, if a team wins a game 13-1, to 1, I can tell you if that team's good or bad. Uh, right. And, and, and it's not always the answer you think, because they won 13-1, to 1, they might be playing an opponent who kicked the ball around, everything else. But you can see uh, what happens? You know, you can see the way they uh, their rotations, their cutoffs, their approach, their, all all those kind of things that you can see regardless of the outcome of how good a team is, regardless of what their what is that thing called o- P- what? O- P- o- 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 OPR, I think o- P- o- P- no, and, and, and I don't care. With you, it was like, but you know, the committee, the committee is damned if they do and damned yes. if they don't. Yes, because they they are in. It, it's a, it's a very very difficult spot to be in and yeah. and you know i know i'm i'm just like i'm, I'm not that type of a, a of a guy i don't care i don't give a crap about per se- winning percentage and strength of schedule and and you know no give me a kid give me a team let's go play another team and we're going to do our best and they're going to do our best and that's how games and 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 seeds and things should be decided because but but here's what happens the the tournament was criticized prior to when they were just taking 16 and they were just doing this and other teams felt as though they should get in. So in fairness, they came up with a formula to try to make it a little bit more um, subjective, I guess, for lack of a better uh, phrase. Yeah. And, and you try to find a way to, to seed teams and, and, and be as, as, I guess specific as you can but now in doing that the committee in trying to do and be more fair and and be more uh open to trying to get other teams in actually created it all their own problem because you got teams that were sub 500 yeah. that were bitching and moaning because they didn't get in literally bitching and moaning I mean, literally bitching and moaning now. All over the social fairness, media, all over the social all media. All over. Now, which, which, you know what? I, I, and, I, and, I, and replying to the county coaches association account, which to me seems a little bit. I mean, do you want to air your I grievances? Asked, you want to air your grievances asked, in that forum, right? But, but here's the thing, though. It's very easy. I said it. I think I said it before. It's very easy when you don't have a seat at that table to sit back in fairness to the guys on the committee to sit back and say how could this team get that seed how could that team get that seed? well yeah. you know what guys they did it in a way where they they they, they did consider OPR then they took um, from 16 down and seeded based on OPR because if they just take that out of the equation now what if they would have just all six guys in that room would have given or seven guys would have given their opinion on who they thought. So, okay, now they did it a different way. They gave their opinion on who they thought should have been there based on wins and quality and this and that. And somebody would have had a problem with that. Yep. No, so, it, you can't. You can't win because you say, "Oh, you know what's it, what's it, I, listen." This is all reaction I saw on Twitter last night. Like, "Oh, what's the big deal? Put in a couple more teams." Okay, then you got the the Bergen County girls basketball and Bergen County softball tournament. And what do people say about those tournaments? Oh, you got too yeah, many. Too, you got too many, many teams. teams everybody's <laughs> yeah. in it. It's, yeah, it's watered. It's watered down. Yeah, and 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 you have to understand that. Listen, we know the guys in the room. People say politics. That drives me nuts. It's not politics. It's about trying to put the best teams in the tournament. Are there going to be mistakes? I'm not even saying there were this year, but some years. You want to say this year? You want to say last year? Whatever the case, there's going to be mistakes. Yes, it happens. But the guys in the room, you have to. Except, and this is what I say about refereeing, too. The guys are trying to do the best job possible. If they blow a call, right. it, it's not politics. It, it's just being a human being. 
You know what I mean? The ump, the, the, the ump is not trying to screw one team or the other. He's not calling it bad against you because somebody paid him under the table. He blew a call. That's all. And it's high school I, sports. It's allowed to happen. But here's, but here's where I have here's where I have a problem with. I mean, having sat on that committee mm-hmm. and and having really every single guy and and you know what it is what I, I know that when I was in there we tried to do the right thing the best job you could the best job we could and and what you what what the problem is when guys aren't in there and then they go out and 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 publicly criticize the entire committee I don't think that that's 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 fair because you're not in that room. You don't know what what's been there. You know, and and with all and you're respect, also you're also allowed to be disappointed. I'm not saying you should be happy about no, no, the no. fact that you were the but last team out. Yes, there's a there's a difference between being disappointed, right, and outright outright just blasting the <laughs> right. the, the, the committee because yeah. you're not there. And and the other thing is, a lot of the times, it's guys that haven't been that that have been around for three and four years that what. What have you contributed yet? And you're going out and going nuts on a group of guys who have your peers, your peers, of, a bunch, of, a bunch of reputations, a bunch of titles, knowledge about the game, are well respected, and and are doing a job that you know what they're there and they're selected to do it for a reason. Yeah, and 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 they're trying to do the right thing. They're not going out and singling out teams and saying we don't like them. They're out. Here's a perfect example of that. Tim Byron was six and eight, right? Yep. You know what he said? He said, "Guys, we're six and eight. We've never done it. We can't go. We we, we can't do it. We can't." Now, if anybody has a right to bitch and moan, yep. And 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 probably uh, more so than anybody else could bitch and moan about six and eight with the schedule he plays and all that other stuff. So, if it was based on if it was based on reputation. And and the committee wasn't doing and the right thing. Politics. Let me ask you something: Would they would they have would they have said, okay, you know what, Tim, you, you've been around forever. We know your teams are good all the time, so you're in. That would have been the wrong thing to do, and and Tim Correct. would not have let that happen. And as as he stated, but it 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 beyond me how guys sit back Monday morning quarterback it. They've never been in the room. They don't know the process. They don't know what these guys go through, and they want to argue about it, and, or not argue. I'm sorry, not argue about it, but criticize. Yeah. What goes on now? It's okay to be disappointed. I'm also, I'm also, and I was one of the guys too. That when you're in that committee, you 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 are subjected to. You know what? You're on the committee. You got a good matchup for yourself. Uh, let's be honest, Corey. Sometimes, sometimes you're in that room. It looks, it looks as though. Wait a second. Are you kidding me? How did they get that matchup? You know, uh, with that record against that team. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yep. it, it it it's actually difficult to to be a part of that committee and come out. I mean, there are guys that are no longer in there, and we we talk all the time about how it, how it looks. And and you know, I get that part of it too. I, I, I really do. It's 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 a thankless job. Yeah. Um, there's it, it's there's no there. I said it before. They're damned if they do. They're damned if they don't. Um, you know, Mike Mike Karsich is is on that committee, um, and and he's been on it the last couple of years. And and we bounce things back and forth with each other about. He would say, you know, it's unbelievable what happens. It's unbelievable what what the, the, the text messages and the things I get afterwards. Like how can so and so get this seed, or how can so and so get that seed? You know, it's just it is what it is. These these guys are 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 are, are not deserving of being blasted um, and being criticized when when they're trying to do what's right. Not um, not not publicly. Not publicly. You want to you no, want to listen. And you want you want you want to you want to get the cell phone number. You want to give them a call and say, hey, I think we got screwed here. Can you explain to me how it happened? And you know what? Some guys, some guys have done that. And, some and, guys and, have called, and we don't know. Or at least from my point of view, I don't know about it. <laughs> you know what I'm how saying? About being a rep. Yeah. yeah. But, how, but, but Corey, how about? And I'll speak from experience. And and those guys, every one of them to a man, can tell you the same thing. 
they get calls from guys that they play against for the last 15, 20 years that they go in and fight for, and those teams are left out, or those teams get a seed where they get a crap matchup, and they're getting a phone call and have to explain to, listen, I did everything I could, yeah, you know, and, and, and they're getting, you know, MF'd up and down because <laughs> it's not them. Be, yeah. try, being, try being a league rep. Try being a league rep and, and having to be, I'll give, I'll give you an example of, of, of Mike Carsage. Mike went in and said, Joe, he goes, you know what, I'm going to push for us. Yeah, I am because we have this amount of games played, we have this amount of wins. The most wins but, in Bergen County. Yeah, right, yeah. All right, but but okay. That being said, you know you know what he said. He goes, "How could I, how could I push ourselves, our team ahead of St. Mary's, regardless right. of wins, and re- regardless of what happens? St. Mary's is first in our league, and St. Mary's beat us. So what am I what what am I going to do? So the guys in that room that that's the way they they go about things. Yeah, like you got a bunch of guys that really really do a good job and they're thorough." Yeah, and you're allowed to, again, I get back to the point. You're allowed to be disappointed. That That's it. Just handle it better. That's all. That's that's the bottom line here. All right, let's get. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no I was no, just going to say, let, let's talk about a couple more games. I mean, I think we made the point. It, it, it's a thankless job. It's, it, you know, and say what you want about Jim McConville, who's in that room. But that guy has watched more Bergen County baseball games than anybody on the planet right now. He's been around Isn't forever. Yeah. He's the like he's the historian, isn't yeah. he? Like, isn't yeah. He? yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, he keeps the official so, book. He put he, that. He charts every he pitch. He put that whole thing together. He put that formula together. Yeah, yeah. He put yeah. it together, and you know what? I do. Do I think? Do I think that that's what um, baseball, the, the the Bergen County tournament, should be uh, predicated on? I I don't. No, I don't. I I, I think that. Yeah, but his his opinion counts. I mean, forget his stats. I don't, right. I don't care about his stats, to be honest with you. Because, you know, all, all stats are compiled after the fact. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, he's going to catch that ball because he has a, you know, a pl- pl- I don't even know what the numerology of it is, but, you know, he's got a wins over replacement, like these stupid stats in Major League Baseball. That's not why you catch the ball. You get that no. because you caught the ball. It, it The action comes first and then the stat. So stats to me don't right. mean anything. I mean, real. It, it's just, you right. know, it, it doesn't make any sense. But I also uh, respect the heck out of the fact that Jim McConville is uh, probably the last person uh, a- actively working in the media who's covered more Bergen County tournament games than me. And uh, I will admit that he uh, knows he has forgotten more than I will ever know about that that county tournament, and I consider myself a uh, a good student of it as well. So, that being said, let's move on to a couple more. Let's touch on some more of the stories here uh, taking shape in this. We mentioned the teams. The other team, the one team that we didn't mention, uh, nice to see them back is Westwood. Uh, I saw them earlier this year in a tough spot against Pascal Hills on a freezing day in a doubleheader. So uh, throw that out the window. Uh, up against great competition, but have rebounded nicely for sure. Uh, and with a new head coach there, you know, Westwood was a staple in the deeper rounds of the tournament, forget just in the tournament, under former head coach Joe Yerko and now back under Nick Urbanovich, who was kind of... Urbanovich. It's uh, Urbanovich. Nick Urba- Urbanovich, who, Urbanovich. I might add, gave me a beautiful piece of memorabilia. I was at the first game that he ever lost as a head coach, and he was kind enough to sign his official scorecard for me. That was very nice, and that's something that Nick would do. <laughs> yeah, he's a good sport, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the other game of tremendous interest, NorthJerseySports.com. Now, the great Richie Ball game says that he will be uh, out and about tomorrow, and the game he is planning on covering is number 19, Indian Hills High School, against yep. number 14, Rutherford High School. Uh, in, in your old stomping grounds, Joe, you used to prowl that. I think you coached, didn't you prowl that first base box as well on the old skin infield down at Memorial Field on the banks yep. of the mighty Passaic River? The banks of the Passaic River, yes, I did with uh, first with um, Sammy Ferretti and then with uh, Mike Lauderhan, yes. Yeah, and you got Division One pitchers, if it lines up that way, going head-to-head uh, in really what is a marquee first-round matchup. And, uh, you know, say what you want. If it's supposed to be 80 degrees tomorrow and sunny, it'll be 45 and windy uh, down on the yeah. banks there. But that has the potential to be maybe the, the best of the first-round matchups. And I want to get to a couple other ones because I think there's some good ones, too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't seen. I've, I've heard of, uh, about... Um 
more about Rutherford than I have about about Indian Hills, but um, it's anything that uh, you know it, that that's a game. Wait, that game is being played. What's Rutherford? The fourteen? Yeah. So that oh, so that's being played down there. Hills is the nineteen. Yep. Yeah, that that's uh, that's uh, you know you get anybody down there and anything can happen. That, that field is just if if something out of the ordinary is going to happen, it's going to happen down there um, on that skin infield. Uh, and you do have you know two good arms going Rutherford. Rutherford, I know more about Rutherford and the arms that they have. Um, but yeah, I mean Corey, look any any matchup is is an intriguing matchup in my opinion in, in the county tournament. Um, you know, any, anything can happen. Uh, teams are in there for a reason, and uh, that is who, who does the winner get? Who does the winner of that game get? The eleven would uh, play the uh, the uh, eleven. What is it? So eleven six. Mar- eleven six. That would be Mawa, right? Doesn't the second round have to add up to seventeen? Yeah, yes, so, yes, yes. You're right. You're right. So you're that right. would yep. that would be Mawa. Uh, why don't I I'll tell you what? Why don't I just why don't I just be be logical about it and and uh, and read it. Yeah, no, but you would be uh, hard pressed to follow me because I, I I don't know if you if you caught that there, but my math Rutherford is the 14th seed. The second has to add up to no, no, 17. It's 14, 19 gets St. Joe's. Yes, right. So what? Three, right. My point is my math. I just added uh, 14 and three together and got. Uh, <laughs> The Jesus wrong Christ. answer. Get McConville. Get McConville <laughs> yeah, on the right. line, please. All right, Get so, McConville. Yeah. So Rutherford, all right, we touched on PV Midland Park. Uh, we touched on Round Paul Bergen Tech. We touched on Woodridge against Fairlawn. And that, you know, take yourself out of it for a second. If you were looking at this as yep. an impartial observer, you have the yep. high-flying Group 1 school, as I mentioned, most wins in Bergen County, uh, against Fairlawn, the Group 4 team that nobody sees because they play in the Passaic County League Wayne Valley, Wayne Hills, uh, Passaic Valley, West Milford. You never see Fairlawn until they get back into Bergen County play. A good job by them to get in and, uh, you know, being honest, Joe, you're going to be playing on on the home turf, but uh, Fairlawn's also a turf team. And if they do, in fact, have their number one lined up to to go, pending the result of today's league matchup, if it was played or not, I can't. I'm looking at looking around for scores, and since I don't know the, if they played today. Yeah, since the implosion of the publication formerly known as the Bergen Record, it's hard to find such things. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Fairlawn Woodridge. Uh, listen, that's one I've been warned against going to, but it's certainly on my list of intriguing matchups. It is. Um, you know, I it's hard to take myself out of it. As a matter of fact, I won't take myself out. <laughs> right. of it. But we, you know, we. I, again, we know that Fairlawn has a, a couple of good arms. You know, big school. Uh, we know, uh, you know, they're pretty good arm behind the plate. They have pretty good center fielder. I mean, you know, again, a program that plays in a league where they go out every day and, and, and beat beat each other up. Um, and from what I understand, they 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 have a pretty good shot uh, to win the league th- this year, uh, Fairlawn. And I, I don't know when the last time they they. They won their league, uh, was, but but they're doing a good job too. It's a lot of seems to be a lot of fresh, um, a breath of fresh air in a lot of in a lot of leagues. Uh, a lot of teams that are that are coming up and, and surprising. And then of course you know you have your staples. But we're going to have our work cut cut out for us. I, I don't care who's on the mound for for Fairlawn. Um, you know we we know that obviously it gets a little bit harder if they if they got the kid uh, the lefty on the mound. Um, but you know I I think. They have confidence in, in anybody they put out there. So, uh, and as do we. I mean, our, our kids are definitely comfortable at home. Um, you know, I think I think they're ready to go. I think uh, I don't want to say that, that that they've exceeded expectations to this point because they're they're a very confident group, but they're not cocky. Um, and we're going to have to pick it clean. We're going to have to do little things tomorrow, and and we'll see uh, we'll see what what what, what happens. Yeah, that's all you can do. We'll see what happens on Wednesday in the opening round. We're getting long here. I mean, yeah. can, I, can, I, yeah. can I ask you a question to get back to this to get back to this team with sub, these teams with sub five hundred records? Any, anything you want, Joe. A, any can question ask, you like, want to ask me? I, I mean, you, I'm not always, I'm not Jim McConville, but I will do my best. You always no 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 no. You always ask me my opinion. I want your opinion oh. on sub on sub five hundred teams getting into the county tournament. What, what do you think? See, opening up a can of worms here. Because I, no, I have, not because it's very simple. No, I agree. I, I my answer would be no, but.
but with a caveat because you can't you know, say that. You no, can't because say no, Joe. But. Next year, my point is next year yeah. with the changing of the leagues, and you look at the schedule that some of these teams are going to play in the Big North. It's right. a grind. It, it, every game, they, you know, and I, 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 I don't want to rehash old history. I, I've done it a million times here. But when you had the NBIL, when you had the three uh, BCSLs, the American, the National, the Olympic, broken down, and when you had the NNJIL, you had the perfect setup because you played balanced schedules, you played everyone in your league. Now, in the NJIC, since the breaking up of that, where the, the, the thing is, and again, I don't want this to be taken out of context because let my work speak for itself. I cover small schools. I love yeah. small school sports. That's the bread and butter of NorthJerseySports.com. I, 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 it's not a chore. I, I would rather be there <coughs> than watching the parochials. Uh, you know, so let that let my record stand on itself. That I love small school sports. But nowadays, with the six hundred and fifty, and with some of the competition that NJIC teams play. It's too easy to get to 650, where it's way too hard for some of these big North schools. So, uh, it, y- no, I don't think a sub 500 team should get into a Bergen County tournament. But if you're going to be fair and you're going to look at who these teams are playing to wind up at six and eight, uh, you know, it's it's easier, it's harder to be six and eight in the big North than some. Not saying all than some schedules played in the NJIC. No, I mean, where I, you can okay, be, and and. I could, I guess and I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to call out schools and say, "Well, th- you know, this one stinks, that one stinks." They, you know, whatever. No, you, but you, people know for themselves. Timmy, no, but there's Tim, a lot Tim, more. It's a lot easier to build the 650. Uh, it's a lot easier to. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's freaking hard no, in the Big North. I do. I do know what you're saying, and I think I'll say it very clearly that if you take and I'll use Old Japan because I don't think Tim would care, and I think he would. He would say this. Uh, to anybody that that he had to, uh, if you if you take a six and eight old Japan team, that six and eight old Japan team, and I understand what you're saying when you said there's a caveat to it. Yeah. But you now you put that six and eight old Japan against an NJIC team that's maybe ten and two, or you know uh, whatever uh, twelve and four, and. <laughs> I, you know, the betting man's going to say that, that Old Japan's probably going to come out on top. Um, yeah, but let's say this, though, about Old Japan this year, and Tim would say it too. Yes, they're 6-8, and eight, but two of those losses, one of them was against Tenafly, and no offense to Tenafly. Tenafly, you know, was a team in transition. They had a great senior class last year, made the Bergen County tournament. But, you know, if he doesn't lose, if, if Old Japan doesn't lose to Tenafly, they're 7-7 seven and seven and they're in. So, you know, you could say we played a tough schedule, but but a game like that, you can't lose and be 6-8 and eight and expect to get it. Now, listen, if, like Ramapo, where your losses are, uh, you know, they, they were 7-5 and five after Friday's game, and I think they lost to Immaculata, so they go in at 7-6. and six. But So they lose to Immaculata, Bergen Catholic, St. Joe's, and St. Peter's Prep as four of their losses. That's different. You know what I'm saying? So if 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 I Ramapo okay. was six and seven, yes, they should have been in because they played St. Peter's Prep, the Ber- Hudson County champion ch- champion on a Saturday morning, and played the Bergen County champion Bergen Catholic on a Saturday afternoon. It's different. They didn't lose to Tenafly, and I'm not singling out Tenafly, a Tenafly ish type team. So then, is the answer, which will never happen, but I I know that. I've spoken about it and kicked it around with us. Is the answer then? You, 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 do you do you separate the threes, fours, and parochials no. and the ones and twos? You know what the answer is, Joe. And and so you then did it'll it. never be. It'll, we're just going to chase our tails no. until. What? No, the answer is you get twenty four teams. You right. take all the people who qualify, six fifty. Right. Right. All the NJIC teams, they got to six fifty. They deserve it. You get you seed your teams, the top eight. You take the right. other big north teams, the best of. Now, some years six and eight might get you in because there's only twenty three teams that are five hundred, right? You know what I'm saying? So if yes. this year, if there's only twenty three teams and the twenty fourth team is Hackensack at six and eight, then Hackensack gets in. It doesn't mean you always get in at six and eight. It just means that on a year where there's not enough teams to fill the twenty four, that's what I say. It used to be hard and fast sixteen. 
Nowadays, it should be a hard and fast 24. You there you go. 24 is too, you don't think 24 is too many? I do. <laughs> That's the other side of it, and that gets to my <laughs> other argument. You, you are your <laughs> typical journalist. And typical, you're liberal. You're liberal. <laughs> right. But he, here's the thing. This is this is my point, and we're 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 going. You know, if anybody still listen to this, God bless you. We love you. That means you're really into. No, they're not. They're not. <laughs> I know, but if they are, they're really into baseball and they care about this type of thing. Or they're getting our. They're they're trying to hunt down our cell phone numbers to tell us to go <laughs> to go f ourselves. No doubt about it. But <laughs> here's the thing. I've talked about this in basketball with the Bergen County Jamboree. I've talked to it talked to it about uh, in soccer with the Bergen County Boys Soccer Tournament. And it should right. be done in baseball, too. The Bergen County Jamboree has a secondary tournament called the Bergen Invitational Tournament, the BIT. The Bergen, okay. uh, the, the soccer has a secondary tournament called the Jersey Cup or the Bergen Cup, whatever it's called. Baseball has none. Right. could easily be instituted. This first round that you're playing on Wednesday should right. be called Decision Day Bergen County. Now, you seed your teams. You got eight already in. You need 16. So, in this case, you got... 24 teams, you got eight games. Those eight games, Decision Day Bergen County, fundraiser. How many people do we know with cancer? All of these worthy causes all across North Jersey. Doesn't have to right. be BCCA sponsored. It could be just a fundraising day with all proceeds right. dispersed across all of these great causes. Uh, and if you win, you get to be one of the six teams that six sixteen teams that officially qualifies for the Bergen County Jamboree soccer tournament or baseball tournament. And if you lose, you drop down into the secondary tournament. And if you were good enough to have gotten to decision day, when you drop into that secondary tournament, you actually have a good shot to win it. So you will still be playing meaningful games. That is the way it should be done. Thank you. That the mic drop? Did you drop the mic there? We'll see you next week on Talking Baseball. <laughs> Follow the leader.